further in the land. One by one, Boromir and Aragorn carried the books, while the others toiled and scrambled after them with a bedding. At last all was removed and laid on the ported way. Then, with little further hindrance, save from sprawling briars and many fallen stones, they... But my lad Sam will know more about that. He's in and out of bag end. Crazy about stories of the old days he is. And he listens to all Mr. Bilbo's tales. Mr. Bilbo is learning his letters. We mean no harm, mark you. And I hope no harm will come of it. Elves and dragons, I says to him. Cabbages and potatoes are better for me and you. Don't go getting mixed up in a business of your betters, or you'll land in trouble too big for you, I says to him. And I might say it to others, he added with a look at the stranger in the mirror. But the gaffer didn't convince his audience. The legend of Bilbo's wealth was now too firmly fixed in the minds of the younger generation of hobbits. Ah! But he has likely enough been adding to what he brought at first, argued the miller, voicing common opinion. He's often away from home, and look at the outlandish folk that visit him. Dwarves coming at night, and that old wandering conjurer Gandalf and all. You can say what you like, Gaffer, but Bag End's a queer place, and its folk are queerer. And you can say what you like about what you know no more of than you do about it, Mr. Sandyman, retorted the gaffer, disliking the miller even more than usual. If that's being queer, then we can do with a bit more queerness in these parts. There's some not far away that wouldn't offer a pint of beer to a friend if they lived in a hole with golden walls. But they do things proper at Bag End. Our Sam says that everyone's going to be invited to the party, and there's going to be presents, mark you, presents for all this very month as is. That very month was September, and as fine as you could ask. A day or two later, a rumour, probably started by the knowledgeable Sam, was spread about that there were going to be fireworks. Fireworks, what is more, such as had not been seen in the Shire for now on a century. Not indeed since the old took died. Days passed and the day grew near. An odd-looking wagon laden with odd-looking packages rolled into Hobbiton one evening and toiled up the hill to Bag End. The startled hobbits peered out of lamplit doors to gape at it. It was driven by outlandish folk, singing strange songs, tours with long beards and deep woods. A few of them remained at Bag End. A deep silence fell. One by one the others fell asleep. Frodo was on guard. As if it were a breath that came in through unseen doors out of deep places, dread that came over him. His hands were cold and his brow damp. He listened. All his mind was given to listening and nothing else for two slow hours. But he heard no sound, not even the imagined echo of a footfall. His watch was nearly over when, far off where he guessed that the western archway stood, he fancied that he could see two pale points of light, almost like luminous eyes. He started, his head nodded. 